We're officially calling the meeting of the Northampton Council on Aging to order on March 11th. It's 3.33 p.m. We see no members from the public, so we'll go right into our agenda. And the first item is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting, February 11th. Um, any questions? We'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes. Actually, the last meeting was not February. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Never We're mind. still in March. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah, you're trying to move it along, Michael. Thank you, but so moved. So moved to for a second to that to the second. motion. I second. Great. So all in favor of approving the minutes from the February 11th meeting. And thank you. Um, anyone have any announcements? Anything they want to share? Announce anything? Yes, Dennis. You're, you're muted, Dennis. Yeah, thank you. Um, so finally, Jay, it's only taken me almost a year, but um, the Friends of Northampton Senior Center is now listed on the Western Mass Valley Gives site as a donation site. I won't bore you with all the problems, but finally, as of two or three weeks ago, um, I got all the legal paperwork from the IRS and from the state to them. So um, we're officially on there as a, uh, a donation organization Great. under seniors. Oh, okay, and have we received any donations? No. <laughs> are they still doing Valley Gives Day? Yeah. Yeah, no, they still are. And it's linked to the Friends of Northampton Senior Center, formerly Elder Vision Bank account. So they will let me know on a monthly report if there are any donations and what was directed, uh, I mean, deposited directly into our bank account, into the operating account. Is that something we might want to promote either in the news, in the constant contact or? Well, that's what I was wondering. I was going to ask Marie. Um, I mean, technically we're not meeting because of COVID and we normally sure. meet at the senior center and we're somewhat um, because of not doing any trips and travel because the senior center isn't open. Um, the things that the city and Marie would ask us to um, fund is sort of on hold. So at some point, I do think we need to let people know, but I'm not sure if right now is actually the time to do that, but I would defer to Marie. And to well, when, when is the next Valley Gives? I thought it's already over this year. It, it's ongoing. It is? Yeah. I thought it, oh, is it not the same thing as Giving Tuesday? So, it, so it's, not a, it's not a single day anymore, guys? Oh. No. No. There, is, there is Giving Tuesday, which is when people promote it, but the site is live 365 days a year and anybody can go and donate to any of the organization organizations on the Community Foundation of Western Mass who sponsors the Valley Gives website. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it makes sense um, at some point to have Elder Vision have a presence in the Chronicle and that could be something that's just always listed as if you want to make donations. And then if you're having a special campaign for something we need, it could be included in that um, as a way to give to that need. That's a good plan. So should I, It's but it's now Friends of Northampton Senior Center. So Yes. Um, I, did I say Elder Vision? Yeah, yeah that's okay. Oh, yeah, that's been that for 30 years. I get it. So yeah. should I draft something to send to you from the friends group, because uh, I'm the treasurer. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I don't know when would be the best time to put it in, or if we just want to. I mean, we could, we we could have the Gazette design sort of just a small square for Elder Vision have a presence in the Chronicle, and then when we decide that we want to ask um, the friends for to to focus on fundraising for something, then that can be added. Sure, you know, no, I, I'm fine with whatever. I mean, now doesn't seem to be the time. Did we no, ever? No. 
Yeah. Do we ever do anything to say that Elder Vision is now Friends of? Um, it's in the Chronicle now, I think. No, but do it, we ever do a story? No, no. I think so. So maybe that's it. Maybe, and maybe Dennis, the Friends board, but maybe because not many. I'm assuming a lot of people don't know what Elder Vision was, and now Friends of a good opportunity to promote, talk about what it is. And then when then do the links when it's fundraising time. Yeah, I mean, it might be best to do the article when we're when things are more normal because I I don't know I don't know if people are devouring the chronicle right now. But but it it would be good for people to know that, and then also you're going to want to recruit more board members, right? Right, because we're now down to four, so I need three people. And I had two potential people to join, but then COVID happened. So that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if they are still interested because um, the board actually is seven people. So we need three people. But what I would suggest, if I may, is I'll draft something to send to you so that when it is the appropriate time, it's ready to go if that makes sense, but not do it now, if that's okay with you. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay. Sounds like a good plan. Any other announcements or things that anyone wants to share? Kathy? Wants to take herself off mute first. I just wanted to say, um, I, I think I was a little bit late getting to the meeting last, um, last month and um, I'm not sure if you introduced yourselves, but. I don't think I know that. Is it Aggie Dominic? Hi. Hi there. Is that, did I say it right, Aggie? Uh, Aggie. 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 Hi. I'm, I'm Kathy Braden. Um, it's nice to meet you. And did I hear that you're, that you were in Puerto Rico? You need to unmute, Aggie. I am at home right now. You are. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, welcome back. Okay, that was Thank so nice. You. That was so nice of you to tune in from <laughs> from so far away. That was lovely. <laughs> well, well, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm, God bless you all. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you're part of the the, the group here. <laughs> Thank you. I have a personal announcement. I got vaccinated yesterday. Johnson and Johnson. Wow. Oh, you're the first person. The first. Where did you have to go? I went to Amherst CVS. There you go. You're the first person I know that got the J Johnson and Johnson. Any any effects from it? I um I want to tell people. I'm telling people I feel just yesterday I felt fuzzy. You know, kind of like a little not achy, but a little bit headachey, but just fuzzy minded. And I took yeah. ibuprofen and it was gone. And then I slept through the night. Today I got up and after a couple hours I felt that fuzziness again. I took ibuprofen and. I'm fine. So in case I fall asleep here, I'm just <laughs> in case you start looking fuzzy, we'll know why. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm so excited because now I have two oh, weeks. Oh, yeah. Jay, put me on the volunteer list again. I can start doing things down there if you need me. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, we're not down there. You, know, yeah, you, got, you got two weeks to go. You got your two weeks well, warranty and then you're ready to go. That's great. Yeah. Anything else before we move on? Um, Marie, director's report. Okay, um, so I don't, I'm sure you've all seen the COVID information bulletin we started sending out. Um, and I mean, that that's partially possible because the Board of Health is feeding us information. Um, and um, we just thought it, it would help to mitigate some of the phone calls and emails and that we're getting, um, we're getting, we're getting a lot of praise for the vaccination clinic. So we are taking that credit, but, um, <laughs> but we're, we're rejecting the criticisms, you know, that we're getting, <laughs> we're getting a lot of emails about, like, I got an email that was like, uh, you know, really angry that uh, the way that they, they were handled, um, and by my staff. And I, I just said, <laughs> I'm sorry you had that experience, but um, it wasn't us. It wasn't my staff. Yeah, we, we, I mean, it's funny because people just automatically assume that because it's our building that, you know, 
um, that we're giving the shots, I guess. <laughs> we all took a crash course in shot giving. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm, I'm hoping things are gonna get a little less um, chaotic soon. Um, it's just the supply issue is wreaking havoc. Um, it was a, there was a, did you all see the really nice letter to the editor in the Gazette this morning from the Board of Health about Meredith? It's very complimentary of the whole team that's taken all the brunt of everything. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 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 I think, um, you know, they, they are handling it in stride, even though I'm sure it's very stressful. Yeah. Um, I can only imagine. So, um, and, you know, but hopefully the panic will lessen. And especially now that they've just um, opened up a registry um, so that people can register and know that they're in the queue, right? Um, yeah, but that, um, to be clear, is only the seven mass vaccination sites. Right, yeah. yeah and most likely local people aren't going yeah. to do that, but um, it will take some of the pressure off, I think. And, um, and then hopefully the supply will increase and there'll be appointments every day. And I mean, there's just been a lot of shipment issues where they're having to cancel at the last minute because it didn't arrive. Um, so. Marie, do you know, have you heard any intel about um, Northampton Clinic getting the J&J &J or? I don't know, but I'm assuming they will. Because that will also help because that seems to be in the pipeline. Yeah, I mean, it'll cut the appointments in half which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so the bulletin is, uh, people have really been happy about getting that. Um, and then um, I'm working on the budget. I've you know, had um, some conversations um, with the finance director and the mayor and, and I'll be having my meeting actually next week um, on that. And um, I think that you know, we're, we're gonna use this as an opportunity to um, come move forward with some of the restructuring um, that I'd been looking at um, prior to COVID, um, which I think is, you know, gonna be a real uh, boon for our efficiency. And especially in this climate where we're not really sure how uh, it's gonna look with volunteers at the senior center, like at the reception desk and things like that. So there will be some, um, there'll be some uh, upgrades that will happen because the clinic, uh, the building's being used as a clinic. So there'll be some, there'll be some FEMA money. Um, <laughs> there'll be some FEMA money to, to do some upgrades, which is great. Um, and what, what, what kind of upgrades? Um, well, I haven't, it's not been confirmed because they were just, they, they hadn't had the meeting yet um, about it, but it, it, um, it, it looks like we, we may be able to get new carpeting and some painting done and that there'll be some, um, at least safety measures made uh, changes to the reception desk to, Great. to allow for that. But we had, you know, been working with architects prior to COVID happening to kind of make some changes to the reception area and to the lobby. But, you know, that wasn't gonna happen right away. It was a plan in the process, you know, in, the, in progress to, to work on the acoustics and the, the flow of people in the lobby. Um, so, you know, I'm hoping those things will happen at some point also, but um, just sprucing the place up a bit for our reopening will be really nice. Um, and um, and then in terms of um, sort of staffing, um, I'm hoping that we'll come to some decision with the mayor and the budget that will will support our um, our efficiency better. Which you know we had we had been managing for staff assistance and um, and and we're looking at sort of. Uh, consolidating those hours into two full-time people rather than four part-time people, which was, you know, a lot less efficient actually. Um, 
because we, we were just managing a lot of people and with very different skill sets. Um, and so we were sort of held hostage if they weren't there. <laughs> so one of them wasn't there. Um, we had to you know wait for them to come back because they they were the only one with that skill set and things like that. So um, I'm you know I'm I'm feeling good about our our getting back um, in a way coming back in a way that will be um, more workable. Um, so, but none of that's finalized yet. Um, and I'm hoping that the funding for our taxi service, um, that we'll be able to continue providing the taxi service, whether it's the funding is continued or not through the grant, um, because it really is more cost effective um, and people have been very happy with it. And so I'm not sure what we'll be doing around the use of the vans, um, but so we'll be looking at that. Um, but I need to, you know, convene with PVTA around um, our pilot program with them and how that might look going forward. Um, so um, let's see. And then what's next on my agenda here? Um, oh, so and we we just um, were awarded um, a service incentive grant through the, um, it's through MCOA, but it, it's actually, you know, it's money, money from EOEA, the Executive Office of Elder Affairs, um, allotted a certain amount of money to be distributed through MCOA, and we will be using that to address isolation. I think I talked about it a little bit last time. Um, so we got, um, I requested $6,300, and, um, We've been working with the Chamber of Commerce to get businesses on board. And so we haven't yet confirmed how many businesses will, will get involved, but between, um, you know, we're between some collaborations with the library and with Grow Food Northampton and the Housing Authority and Northampton Neighbors, we we're hope, hoping to uh, deliver these care packages to 600 people that we you know, sort of did a, a poll with different agencies and came up with that number of how many people Northampton Neighbors has identified as either single people over 60 or isolated couples. Um, Highland Valley gave me a number, the Housing Authority gave me a number, and I sort of did the, the comparisons to who was living in what buildings and um, and came up with that number. So if, if it turns out that we have a lot more people than that, then we may, um, um, you know, choose to do it again with funding that we provide, or we will hit up the friends group or something. But I think, I think 600 is a pretty good number. Um, and we're hoping to, you know, maybe that these, these are going to feel like swag bags and everyone will want one. I don't know, but <laughs> so what, what's, what's the, what's in the bag and what's the underlying purpose? Um, well, so the grant is um, really to address isolation. Um, and, you know, it feels in some ways that feels a little late in the game. Right. But it, it also is, I think, crucial in terms of timing for sort of this transitionary period where people are have been waiting to get vaccinated and are going to get vaccinated and then um, may be ready to venture out into the community more or um, have become very isolated because they've lost friends or family or um, you know don't have a lot of connections. Um, it's just it's a transitionary period that I think is it's really crucial to kind of uh, welcome people back to living right to we're sort of thinking of it as a get involved, you know, get involved in online programming if you haven't already, um, get out into nature. So I've talked to Forbes about doing um, sort of a insert, like a inserting a folding uh, bird birding guide. Um, so, you know, something that everybody could use really. Um, and um, maybe a coupon for the farmer's market, you know, getting people out to venues like that, um, you know, it's not just for people who are, uh, you know, it's not income-based. It's really, I'm sure people 
who we identify as isolated may be struggling financially, but really it's um, everyone's been isolated on some level, right? Because of this situation, but some people are um, maybe more isolated or have, um, have less resources or have less family or friends. And so it's really a way to kind of encourage people and invite them to become part of things we're trying to set up. So I'm hoping that we're gonna be able to sort of collaborate with partners around creating um, events or you know um, things that people could go to as an outing or a social gathering or a, an exercise class or um, plein air painting, you know, just all kinds of things sort of as a, um, now that the weather's shifting and people are getting their first and second vaccinations that um, it's time to, to start getting, getting back to living. So. Um, also a time where the businesses are starting to reemerge. And so it, you know, it's a perfect timing for this. So it yeah, will, you know, help the economy, help the businesses, and the businesses can get involved in getting our folks out there, inviting them to you know discount days for seeing or for older adults and that sort of thing. Yeah, because yeah, because they old the older population really is going to be the first mm -hmm. the the first people hitting the ground, right? That who are safe. Um, so. Um, and, you know, and I think that um, not, you know, we, we are all excited to, to get back to, to, to things, but I think also there's, there's fear, right, and anxiety, and, and also the longer someone is isolated, actually, the harder it is sometimes to, to stop isolating. Um, I see that with my teenager, <laughs> you know, it's just... Um, so, and it can be overwhelming just to go out and be overloaded with sensory input that you haven't had for a while. Jane, you have a question? Yes, do we, do we have um, maybe a membership form um, that could be in the bag? Like, you know, so that um, I thought that, and because I also, you know, I am involved with Northampton Neighbors and if they had their membership form in there as well, I mean, because they do phone calls to people who are isolated. And right. so it would be a way that they could request it if they, if they chose. Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm already talking to Northampton Neighbors. I'm not sure um, there's multiple ways they want to be involved. And I, um, we are putting together an information packet that like Cooley's already, um, you know, lots of different places are going to put their information into this packet. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we don't want it to be overwhelming, but I think um, a membership, yeah, getting people to sign up for a membership to, to us and to Northampton Neighbors is great. Because I, I know that some people definitely aren't members still, right. you know. Right, and, and so for some people doing that online would be like a stumbling block. Mm -hmm. Well, they actually can't become a member online. We haven't figured that one out yet. <laughs> it is somebody got yeah. them. <laughs> they have to do it on paper. Well, they can call us and we can we can register them. <laughs> yeah, I mean we can. We do we have been doing that over the phone, but I think um, in the past we, you know, we we were just doing it in person on paper and then we'd give people a tour or answer their questions or whatever. But I think um, you know, why not have a virtual tour? Like there's all kinds of things we could do if we were thinking about that from, from this perspective now, I think it's, it makes sense. Be a while before we can do a virtual tour. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, a virtual tour. Do you have other stuff, Maria? Do people have questions of you? Do you have things, additional stuff you wanted to share? Um, I do, I, we also are applying for, um, we're applying for to MCOA for, for funding that we'd have received last year, but weren't able to do the um, Living Your Best Life program. Um, and so they had, you know, sort of, um, we were supposed to have it last spring. And so they've reinstituted that funding and we, we are applying for that. So I'm anticipating we'll be doing that online. Um, 
And um, so we'll be trying to find a facilitator for that shortly. Um, and that's, you know, that's, I think, a great thing to be doing now, too. I mean, even though it's people needed it before the pandemic to learn how to be more resilient, like we can always learn to be more resilient. So um, and I think it'll be a great way for people to connect with other peers and and plan to do things. So we're hoping it will sort of um, connect people and then. Uh, encourage those people to continue those connections outside as they're able to start doing things like maybe a walking group or things like that. So, um, and, you know, we've met with the Y around um, this idea and I've spoken with the rec department also about creating um, programs that we can promote for people to do together outside I'm, I'm really kind of hoping that the businesses, some of them will, um, you know, create, so, you know, like if we had a business every day that was like at this time, get 50% off coffee or something uh, for seniors um, so that there's something we can say like every day of the week, there's something going on. I know Northampton Neighbors is going to do um, uh, neighborhood circles and things like that. So there's it's just sort of a way to, um, in this packet, we'll be sending out saying like, look at all these things that you can get involved with um, to get back out into the community. I think the Y is gonna be doing like a free membership week for seniors. So it's, it's exciting that we have some stuff to, to promote. Do we have any timeline for like when we might partially hybrid, whatever open. You know, so I just, I, I didn't send you guys my article because I hadn't finished it yet, but um, I just wrote that in my April article. Um, we, we definitely won't be opening um, until the regional clinic is closed um, and they've committed to three months. So it, that would be May, um, probably the end of May. And I don't think we'll be opening the end of May. Um, and, it, and, you know, I don't, like, as, you know, we, we know a little bit more than we did before, but at this point, like, um, I can't really say, like, we're going to open June or July or even September. I don't know. It's, um, I mean, I, every time I meet with the mayor, I'm like, you got anything for me? <laughs> no, nothing. Uh, it's just so, um, you know, I think every day there's new news and, is it driven by the local health department or the state? Um, well, the health department is advised by the CDC. And so the state, um, I'm sure the state is, Meredith is consulting with the state. Um, but I mean, yesterday I got an email from Hadley Senior Center Director saying they were gonna be opening on Monday to people who've been vaccinated so I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but I just thought, you know, this is this is a strange time, right? I, I don't want to be in that position um, of saying you can't come in the building if you haven't been vaccinated. I, I, I actually think there are ethical concerns about that that I'm not comfortable with. So um, I'm glad I don't have to be in that position because we are a vaccination site. So we we, um, we can't open until the building is um, served its purpose for that. And then there'll be a little time, I'm sure, to because they've emptied, they've pretty much emptied our building. <laughs> um, so we'll have to put everything back together. Um, but su at summer, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Better safe than sorry, right? Yeah, yeah. And, um, and that's why I'm really wanting to focus on, you know, creating stuff that um, we can, we can partner with other organizations to, to make things available to people. And if the weather, you know, if the weather is good, I think, I'm hoping that people won't be um, breaking down the doors, so to speak. Um, you know, that I know people are probably anxious to get back to the senior center, but when we do get back there and we're able to start to move towards, you know, 
pre-COVID levels of service, like we will, we will get right back to um, whatever level is safe to do of programming. And um, so I think, I think people will be happy, but some people will, will be impatient, I'm sure. Um, other staff, any questions of Marie? There, just one more thing um, that uh, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission's regional age-friendly meeting, um, what we had with the community partners, all the all the towns that are involved with with that planning, um, did a. They had some speakers on um, from Bab. Was it Babson College, right? Um, that they did a, a study on. Um, seniors and technology, and that was that was um, informative. I, I didn't learn a lot more than we don't than we already know, but it was it was good to sort of be reaffirmed that we are on the right track. We're doing what we need to be doing to meet to meet people where they are around technology, and um, I think there are going to be a lot of shifts going forward. I'm hoping, but it seems like it's really um, you know a big topic of conversation in terms of policy about where things are going to go around equity with digital, the digital um, access. And so hopefully um, there'll be more and more access for seniors and, and people who haven't been able to come to the senior center will be able to participate remotely and we'll be able to help them to do that by providing technology to them. So it's going to be different. It's going to be a different, um, a different focus for us. I think when we go back to the building, uh, where we're going to be juggling on-site programming, off-site programming, and and remote programming. So we, we should have something for everyone. I think. <laughs> right. So and I think that's everything I have to report on. Ben, did you have a question? Yeah, I had a question about um, the your mention of the like Board of Health made me curious. Um, are they able to provide any like basically I'm curious, like, is the Board of Health in a position to be able to say what percent of uh, folks, particularly 65 and older, are getting vaccinated or, you know, like any of the surveillance around that in terms of just keeping, getting a sense of like what's going on in Northampton um, mm -hmm. and to what extent, you know, we should be whatever, concerned or doing additional outreach. I, I suspect that that level of data is just like not at the city level, especially since people can go, you know, to a ma ma like a large vax um, site elsewhere yeah, in the I state, right? Um, but I'd be curious, like, you know, to the extent that that's a useful um, reflection of just sort of how we're doing as a, as a city um, and to, to what extent, you know, the folks in our city are, are feeling able to be getting more out there um, protected with vaccine. Like if there's opportunities for that. Um, and again, I kind of think the answer is no, but just thought I'd ask. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know um, if they're able to compile that data. You know, I mean, I'm sure that Meredith is reporting her numbers and that this, I mean, I know the state is compiling their numbers, um, but yeah, people are going to Greenfield, they're going to, you know, Gillette Stadium, they're going to Eastfield Mall. I mean, people are going all over the place. Um, but they're being recorded, you know, those those numbers are being recorded. Um, you know, I think that there, there isn't a, a regular uh, report on that. But I'm sure Meredith could tell us something. But I think she's so She's so busy that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely not the top of her list. Getting vaccine, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, I mean, they're just, they're constantly having to pivot based on just the chaos they're dealing with. So, um, I mean, I, I sat in on the hearing with the governor, um, was that last week, the week before? I don't know, but I, I felt very bad for him. <laughs> it was, it was uh, six hours of, um, 
being beaten over the head, really. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's yeah, it's a mess. Um, but people are getting vaccinated, so um, yeah. So we're you know we're trucking ahead, and uh, yeah, I I it's hard to not know. You know th that there's so much uncertainty still. Just we're planning as we can. You know we're we're uh, meeting with our you know our sister agencies like um, regularly. We're getting as much information I think as we can, and it's it's all very uncertain. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, no more questions, Jay. Yep, uh, three areas that I'm going to report on. One is the tech loan program, just some uh, stats that I wanted to share with you. We've completed 18 uh, 30 day or longer uh, loans. We have seven out right now for loan, and we have nine people on the wait list. Um, we have the iPads available for those folks, but we're only able to conduct two appointments a week right now. Mm -hmm. um, because of, uh, one, the inclement weather, and two, we only have access to a safe training area for about four to five hours a week. So that's kind of holding things up a little bit. Um, but our tech loan trainer is also, you know, available by phone to answer questions. So she's doing more than just the training and the loaning of the, of the uh, devices. So um, the other thing was transportation. We've done a total of 232 cab rides since the program started and uh, the NoHo senior shuttle that started up uh, several months ago, we've done 127 rides with them. Um, so far we've spent 31, a little over $3,100 on of our grant money from uh, for the taxi service. And we just got an extension uh, from March 31st to the end of June. Um, and we also were able to get uh, ride categories added to what we had previously in our grant. So now instead of just non-emergency medical rides, we can also provide rides for groceries um, essential errands, prescription drug pickups, and that sort of thing. Um, rides to the farmer's market and also rides to any of the sort of the local uh, vaccination clinics. Um, we do foresee more rides coming up uh, due to one, the better weather, vaccines, doctors opening up to more visits, and um, we definitely enjoyed much better service with Cosmic Cab than we had with Aaron's. So the word is getting out there and uh, the reputation is, is helping. Good. And then the last thing is uh, Look Park is doing a fundraiser to provide park vehicle passes to low income individuals or families. And I met with their coordinator there and asked them to see if they could raise enough for 140 passes for our brown bag uh, program and nutritional outreach program participants. And those passes are annual passes. So it's a pretty nice um, uh, perk for, for folks who, who wouldn't necessarily have the opportunity to go. So that's it for me. Jane has a question, I think. Yeah, do we, um, do you have to be a member of the scene? I mean, in order to get the, to, if you want to call and get tech support or um, or get a ride, we, we, it's, 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 for members. it's for members of the senior center only? Yeah, I mean, sometimes we take emails or phone calls from people who, who need help with tech support, uh, who are not members that we don't really, you know, hold them to that. Uh, we take every opportunity we can to have people become members and we can do that over the phone but we don't the rides are definitely required that they they be a member great jerry ann um jay could you refresh my memory i know you said this last month about seniors that want to have their taxes done 
I, I, I kind of didn't have that. It didn't apply to people I know. Now somebody's asking me to pick up the cover form. And I'm a little intimidated because it's a vaccine site. Can you actually go up to the door and pick up the form? Yeah, so outside of the senior center door uh, where the parking lot entrance is, right? Um, there's, you know, there's a donation box and then right next to that donation box. So between the donation box and the door is a little black uh, file cabinet. All the forms are in there. The file cabinet's gotten kind of salty, but <laughs> um, but yeah, everything is everything's in there, but they need to have an appointment. So they should contact us to uh, to have their appointment made. They need the appointment before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So there's still room for people to sign up. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Matter and fact, we just we just, just call the, the general number and say you want an appointment. Yeah, just call the general number and or they can send me they can send an email to senior services. Okay. Good to hear that there are appointments. I was on a, a Zoom meeting with ARP folks the other day. Statewide, that's not the case because they've had. I don't know, thirty percent reduction in people volunteers and they're turning people away. Mm. Oh. In other well, parts of the state, they don't have the capacity. Ours is sort of the opposite right now. The, the demand has sort of waned a little, and um, the the coordinator who's handling it for AARP is telling us, "Hey, we need some more. <laughs> We're going to yeah. have to let volunteers go." So, yeah. Uh, another question: This person's a homebound person, has a broken leg right now, so they don't have to make any kind of in-person. I can run the forms. That's what I'm planning to do is run the forms for them. So yeah, is I that... think it would be appropriate, right, Laura? Yeah. I'm just gonna chime in on that because I think in order to, uh, we better double check on that because I think there is a point in the process where you do have to be in person. You have to have an ID and whether you could pick it up with that right. ID, you might be able to do that. Right. Jerry, and I'll send you an email with a link to the person who's the coordinator and you should ask him that question directly, okay? Okay, thank you. Jay, that it for you? Any other, any other questions of Jay? Let's move on to old business. Kathy and Jean, to side by side in the Hollywood squares, we have the revised and yet again revised statement um, that was- Cindy, I'm sorry. We skipped over Nancy, who's on the agenda. I'm sorry. So sorry. I did. I missed that. I'm sorry. Yeah, we, and Nancy. Sorry, Nancy. <laughs> it's fine. I didn't know where I was on the agenda anyhow, so I didn't realize I had been skipped. Uh, Hi, everybody. Hi, Nancy. Uh, long time no see. Miss all of you. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to mention that just trying to think about the reopening and have had conversations, obviously, with the staff about what that might look like. Uh, but from my perspective, in terms of, you know, um, marketing and, and letting people know kind of where we are and where we're headed. Uh, I was thinking about, um, you know, like a kind of like a tagline for us, almost um, something like, you know, come back stronger or something like that. Uh, and so just looking for some feedback from all of you, um, you know, what, what would you like to see us focus on when we come back? You know, what do you all think should be the priorities? Because I know I have priorities from my perspective in my position. You know, Marie has priorities, Jay, Michelle, the social worker, Laura, I'm sure has things that are priorities for her from when we reopen, but it would be really helpful to hear from all of you in some capacity. And I'm not saying you have to say what that is right the second, but, you know, think about it, ponder it, maybe pop me an email about, you know, what do you think are the priorities for when we open? Um, what makes sense to you? 
Um, and also, you know, you all are kind of ears to the ground for us. So it would be helpful for me to know, you know, what other people are talking about. You know, are you hearing, um, gee, when, I, when the senior center reopens, I hope they reopen that pool room. Or are you hearing, you know, gee, when the senior center reopens, I hope they get that artwork right back up really quickly or whatever it is, I don't know. So uh, I think it would be helpful for me uh, to hear some of those things so we can, you know, put that with the thoughts of the staff. And, um, and so I'd also like to kind of try to figure out ways to reach out to people who we either have been seeing in the senior center or people who haven't come to the senior center, you know, what, what's the priorities for them? You know, what would make someone who's never come to the senior center want to come now when we reopen, you know, um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, does, do any of you have any questions around that? What might be helpful, I don't know what your time frame is, is if we put that as a separate agenda item for our next meeting so that we people can be thinking it might be helpful also if you wanted to share some of the thinking that's already gone on. I think, I know for me, probably for others, it's easy to look at something and say, oh, that's great. Or have you thought about X in addition to that? But if you mm -hmm. want, if that's, an, if that's not gonna, it's a, if the timing works for you, would that work? We can just definitely just have a discussion and give people more time to think about it. And then if you can just sort of be a catalyst with what some of the ideas that are already floating. Mm -hmm. we, we have um, also been thinking that in the care package that we're gonna put out that we will um, either in the package or as a follow-up, um, want to do we need to do a survey for the grant requirement but that this could be, sort of serve multiple purposes and that's not till may that the package would go out but um it might end up being that that's good timing um and so um if we could get you know feedback from people that way and it could be you know it could be multiple formats that people could respond through so having um, a discussion at our april meeting would fit with the timing yeah, I mean, and you know, whatever we end up have, we may have to prioritize certain things based on our space, right? And and how much space we can use for what people. So, you know, there are going to be some people who think that we should prioritize only bridge, or that we should prioritize only food, or only pool, or you know, I mean, people are people are going to want to go back to what they enjoyed, right? But we we may have to explain, this is something that's gonna be, we're gonna be having to figure out is like um, the square footage and the social distancing requirements and how are we going to address that? So if I think it, it makes sense to do, to, to ask for feedback and then figure out how we're gonna to respond to that feedback and then be able to explain why we could and couldn't do certain things. Yeah, and I, I, think, I think we all would agree that providing context will be absolutely critical to acceptance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And yeah. That, something that maybe we won't be able to prioritize during like a soft reopening may come later. Sure. In the, in yeah. The it's like, you know, nothing's going to open. It's like restaurants started with a smaller percentage than they got to go bigger, you know, all of that stuff. I think, I think we're all used to by now a year later to that kind of, staggered yeah yeah and we i mean we just we really don't know what um what the emotional climate will be i guess uh when we get back and and what how that will change over time um i'm anticipating that you know some people are going to be very traumatized and and some people are going to be overjoyed and you know that there's going to be a lot of different kinds of reactions. And that's sort of what I spoke to in my April article. Um, I'll, I'll send it to you all after the meeting, um, which, you know, I hope, I mean, Jay and Nancy, you read it. I hope it wasn't, um, it didn't sound like, oh my God, we're going to come out of our houses now. Yeah. But, I mean, it was, it was sort of like, uh, yeah. I was sort of being motherly, I guess, in a way, because I, I was just sort of thinking about how, um, you know, how it can be overwhelming 
it's overwhelming just to go to the grocery store with this COVID stuff. I mean, I think everything is shifted from the way we know it, you know? Um, well, and I think you guys are being very thoughtful about how you're approaching it and getting input and taking the time. I think it sounds like a really terrific plan. Yeah. yeah. And I think uh, a point that in your article, Marie, that really kind of resonated was, and you alluded to it a little bit earlier, is that people, some people are going to have a real difficult time coming out of isolation. Like they've, they've sort of built into this comfort in not having to go out and they don't really realize how that's impacting them, you know, um, in a negative way. So it's going to be, well, I think also they might be thrilled to go out, but they might have anxieties about going out now that we're, are very, you know, sort of this layering, yeah. um, of, you know, um, you know, and I know the vaccine is giving people a lot more confidence, but there's still, you know, unknowns. And I think that um, just having been through this, people are are going to um, have all kinds of ranges of emotion about all kinds of things. So, okay, thanks. So, Nancy, anything else? Unless anybody has any specific questions for me. Well, we'll look forward to having this agenda item and seeing you again then. Okay, great. Oh, that's great. Oh, Kathy has her hand up. Kathy, sorry. Um, yeah, I just I just wanted to tag on to just um, say also, you know, I really appreciate how thoughtful you, the staff is being about this and commend you all on, on your thoughtfulness of thinking this through. Because as you say, there's so much still uncertain and we just don't know and yet, it really does need to be thought through, and and um, and it is an opportunity to uh, sort of I think you called it a soft opening. And that's always an opportunity to perhaps um, think through what what what's needed at this particular time, and and how how should things maybe feel different or whatever. And I want to also thank you for offer you know for reaching out to us as the as the uh, council uh, for our ideas. And I really like uh, Cynthia's idea about um, it would be wonderful. I think if maybe staff could um, could put something in writing to us of what your thoughts are, just broad strokes. We don't need you to spend lots of time or, or go into big details or write any big reports, but just, just some broad strokes so that we could sort of like respond to it and think about it as we give you our feedback back um, about it. So I, I think that was a great idea. So I just, I just wanna thank you and look forward to our next meeting to talk more about that. Sure, yeah. Right. Thanks, Kathy. Okay, now. I get us back on the where I thought we were going. Um, sorry, Kathy and Jean, have, are no, but they're not, you're not together anymore, Nick. We got rearranged. So um, the updated report was sent out. I'm turning this over to you, Jean and Kathy, whoever's gonna take it. Um, I'm not exactly sure what you're looking for. My understanding is we, so um, just to sort of update where I, 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 I think we are is that um, based on our conversation that we all had last month, um, Jean and I um, updated the document to reflect the changes that you had suggested. And then we sent that to um, Marie and Cynthia, who I believe sent it to the mayor for um, his thoughts and approval and feedback. And so I think we're looking forward to hearing what um, may, you may have heard from him. And then I think my understanding is our next step would be to, um, to vote on it. As, as, does that it's pretty much sound like Ash. your understanding too? Jerry Ann, you had a question? My editing skills here. I, I think there might be a typo in it. Very possible. <laughs> anybody, that, anybody that has it in front of them. The, I do. Uh, if you count down the sixth line from the left-hand margin, um, people across the lifespan. I think it's supposed to say their lifespan, but I'm not sure. See how, how that, re it says, we recognize that such social injustices affect people across the lifespan. Sure. The, life, the, it, the seems like it's not the right word there. Their lifespan, I think is what you want to say. I'm not sure though. Sure. We could do that. that. I, I, would, I think it would be lifespans, yeah. their lifespans. Not mistaken. I'll, I'll, I'll grammar check that. 
So we have a edited, a lot of opinions. We have the final version and I would entertain a motion that we accept it. Yeah, the mayor, the mayor did, um, didn't have any suggestions for changes. He just approved it. Okay, great. So Cynthia, do you need a motion or do you have a second? Do you need a second? Need a second. I'll Matter second. First one, need a first. I, I move to accept. I second. Second. Um, all in favor of approving the Black Lives Matter statement? As edited or no? As it, well, as edited, right. I mean, okay. <laughs> okay, great. So we, have, we again thank Kathy and Jean for their hard work and flexibility and patience over and the Kathy past several months. Kathy and Jean, thank all of you, all the input that was put into it. <laughs> so. We, we got we, we ended up where we wanted to end up, which is terrific. Thank you guys. So um, and we had left it off last time that um, well, I mean, I was thinking that posting it on the city website on our senior 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 services page would make sense um, or having a tab for um, Pol you know policies and things like that, um, where the guide the guidelines are posted and things like that. Um, and then, do you want to post print it in the Chronicle? And when would you want to do that if you think that that's something you want to do? Thoughts? Well, I think it should go in the Chronicle after it's been posted on the website. Or simultaneous. I think it's a bit of it's a bit of news. I mean, at the, it was approved at today's meeting. It becomes a news item. And in context, I think that works. Okay, so and um, it's it. I guess it would have to be May, right, Nancy? Yeah, it's too late now. Yep, it's fine, right? Yep, because the deadline is passed for April. Right. Unfortunately, it's always relevant. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Right. I, I think I don't think it's time sensitive. I think it's so. I think it's fine. One oh, other, okay. and I would like to say when we, when we have the discussion about coming back stronger, that what we wrote in that article might be stuff that we could consider. Right. Mm -hmm. Good point. Well, do you feel like it needs? Um, do you feel like it needs a introductory paragraph or to be part of? I mean, it could be a it, it could be on its own page even with, um, we haven't had the council have a page in the Chronicle before, you know, it's sort of been like an intermittent thing where um, there's been content from the council. So um, it might, might be good to have some kind of um, qualifier of what this is, what, you know, why you're seeing it now. I mean, I know that it contains, uh, some of that, but. Well, is, is that what you meant, Jean, or did you mean, way I, what I interpreted what Jean said was, we have action steps at the bottom of the statement that we just approved and using those as an overlay for the reopening pro plans. Is that what you said? That's what I was referring that's what, to. That's what I interpreted, but you said. Well, more, yes. Marie has to say, I, what, is also seems like so it doesn't so it's not something that's sort of an isolated bullet is what you know in that looks like an ad or something <laughs> that, well, that, that it's kind of of where I came from and what the process was I'll, I'll take a hand in you know from coming from the board and just you know what we went through and why yeah. run it by you guys beforehand so the due date for the may chronicle will be before our next meeting Okay, no, I, I, I meant running it by actually Jean and Kathy. Who oh, okay. This time. That but, makes sense, yeah. And Nancy, let me know, you guys let me know what the due date is. Yes, Jerry Ann. Um, I think it might be nice to do a little intro statement, letting them know your board's been at work while we've been on hiatus. So I would love uh -huh. to have some little intro saying, you know, this was something that the board worked on. Or as an intro. Exactly what I was offering to do. Yeah. Exactly. We're on the same wavelength. Exactly what he's going to offer. 
And then in terms of the action steps, I mean, I think um, it's saying something about that, that this will be an ongoing process that that it's part of the mission of the council. And so, um, because I mean, as we talked about before, it will be, it, it will be part of our thinking as we return and get back up to speed to be doing um, satisfaction type surveys and, and assessments of our programming. But I think it's gonna be a little while before we're sort of going full force with those things. But I, I think it's great to let people know that of course we are, um, excited to return and to start the work again and to, to be coming back uh, better and better. Yeah, that's great. Thank you thank, again, Jerry Ann. Um, I wanna thank whoever put our Dennis's name and my name back on the board, but <laughs> being that I'm an editor, my name again is spelled wrong. So if that could be corrected, it's just, I don't know. It probably doesn't bother anybody else if you're listed as Maria Westberg, but I would like to have my name spelled correctly or something. So has two R's and two N's. There you go. Oh, yes. I, <laughs> um, yeah, that might have been my fault because I, I let Nancy know that that those needed to be add back on, added on, but um, I may have spelled your name wrong. <laughs> People often leave out an R for some reason, add an E on the end, but. It's in, it's in the front foyer as you walk in. I was on the building committee. Anybody that wants, that's the proper <laughs> spelling. It's right on the wall there. The plaque. <laughs> Go check the plaque out. <laughs> Thank now you. We all know we've committed to memory. And the beauty of being on Zoom is we have your name right in front of us. So <laughs> we cemented about how to spell it. Um, anything else before we entertain a motion to adjourn? Our next meeting is April 18th. 8th, excuse me, April 8th. It's March is going fast. It's, I can't believe. And if yeah. anybody wants any handy hints on how to get a, an appointment for the vaccine through CVS, let me know. I know a little, a little bit of a hint. The expert, <laughs> the CVS expert. Well, it's good to hear that there are appointments because a couple of weeks ago, I, I, somebody emailed from other, another director emailed the list of all the CVSs in the state, and they all said no appointments available so yeah <laughs> well, let's hope i saw for the ed teachers educators i saw the thing in the globe this morning where they're setting aside separate saturdays for at exclusively for educators and staff to get vaccinated nice yeah so you don't have um, to i meant to say in my report that the housing authority um reached out and there there's going to be clinics at a couple of the housing authority buildings and so um, they reached out about transportation so we will be providing transportation for people who live in the buildings um, that aren't going to have a clinic to get to the buildings where there are clinics so Great. yeah so now that the governor's opened up to multi models of of an approach to vaccination. I think it's gonna flow a lot better. It makes much more sense. Yeah. That's terrific, thanks for adding that. That's terrific to know that there's more availability. Yeah. I mean, the oh, deadline, thanks. you had a question. Um, the deadline is April 5th at the very, very latest. For the, thank you. I'd prefer Friday, but if you can't, then Monday. No, I, I, I just, I'll work back now. I, I won't, I promise you, I will, I will not wait till the deadline. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Promise. Oh, Ooh, okay. looks like I have a date here. Hold on. Do we have a, I, um, what a cute dog. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I still move. A second. Great. Right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good meeting. And um, we'll see you all in April. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye.